Hello and welcome to Chemix. Today we will be synthesizing diethyl ether by acid catalyzed condensation of ethanol. First off, credit where credit is due. Mist32YT and Nile Red have already posted videos on this synthesis, and I am pretty much exactly following Nile Red's procedure. So if you want to check out their videos and their channels, which I highly recommend, I have the two links in the description down below. So with that out of the way, let's get to chemistry. On the left I have just a little over 100 milliliters of 99% ethanol and on the right I have just a little under 100 milliliters of sulfuric acid. The exact proportions aren't that critical for this synthesis since we are going to add more ethanol later on anyways. I have transferred the ethanol into a 500 ml round bottom flask and set up for the addition of the sulfuric acid. Since the addition is exothermic, the flask is sitting in an ice bath and I have pre-cooled the sulfuric acid in the freezer. The addition has been started and I've adjusted a constant drip rate. All of the sulfuric acid has been added, so we can now switch our setup to distill off our ether. Before we proceed, it's time for a warning. Ether is very volatile and it readily forms explosive mixtures with air, so just take great care not to let any ether escape the apparatus. With that warning in place, let's continue. I'll show you the apparatus, but it's pretty big, so I'll have to do several shots. First, we have our boiling flask containing the ethanol and sulfuric acid mixture. It is followed by a glazing adapter to which we'll add an addition funnel later. After the glazing adapter comes a very long Vigreux column. On the top I have a still head with our trusty digital thermometer probe we built in a previous video. On the cold side of the apparatus I have my dimmed cooler. And last but not least we have a vacuum takeoff, our collection flask and a wash bottle containing just a little bit of sulfuric acid. And this serves to trap any ether vapors that want to escape. Here I have roughly 20 grams of sand that I washed with some hydrochloric acid, then some water, and then left it to dry. We're going to add this so uh, the mixture boils evenly. Instead of the stopcock, I now added the addition funnel to the Clayton adapter and once the ether evolution gets going, we'll start to add ethanol. But now we have to turn on the heating and wait till everything gets up to temperature. We are just now getting the first bubbles of ether, but the rate of production is still too slow, so we have to continue heating. The target temperature is 140 to 145 degrees Celsius. Be sure to not heat it over 150 degrees Celsius, since then the elimination reaction will be favored and will start producing ethylene gas. So, I'll monitor this and once it seems to reach a steady boil, I'll uh, back down the heating and we'll distill off our ether. We observed the first droplets of ether condensing on the bottom of the Vigreux column. Here we are a couple of minutes later and the distillation is now really going. The still head temperature currently reads 35 degrees Celsius, which corresponds very well to the theoretical 35 degrees Celsius boiling point of diethyl ether. We are collecting diethyl ether at a pretty constant drip rate now and I've opened the addition funnel to adjust the same drip rate of ethanol into the reaction flask as we are collecting ether. I started out with 300 milliliters of ethanol in the addition funnel and I think this should be enough. I had to insulate the Vigreux column with some aluminum foil since the ether couldn't make it over and I had to overheat the reaction flask, thus producing too much ethylene gas. Since the acid is only catalyzing the reaction, you can theoretically keep distilling over as much ether as you want as long as you keep adding fresh ethanol. In reality, the sulfuric acid is consumed inside reactions, so the amount of ether you can distill off is limited. 
I started out with 300 milliliters of additional ethanol in the addition funnel and I think this should produce enough ether for all my upcoming uh, experiments. So I'll be stopping the distillation once I've added all of my 300 milliliters. But I'm sure you could go a longer way with the sulfuric acid we added. The still head temperature is now stable at 60 degrees Celsius, which indicates that we are distilling over a mixture of ether, ethanol and water, which of course is to be expected since we are carrying out a condensation reaction. One thing you have to be aware of is suck back, and this happens pretty easily since diethyl ether is pretty soluble in sulfuric acid, so uh, the sulfuric acid will rise up the wash bottle and eventually spill into your distillate. So in order to prevent this there are several ways. You can either add a second wash bottle between your vacuum takeoff and your actual wash bottle to serve as um, empty space in case you do get sucked back. Then you can also use an inverted funnel and NerdRage did a great video explaining how to set up this. And then what I opted for was you just fill up the wash bottle with a tiny bit of sulfuric acid, so if you do get sucked back, uh, only a tiny amount can get sucked back into the tube, and it's not enough to actually reach your product. Since the reaction is going so well, I thought I might as well add another 100 milliliters to the addition funnel, so the total amount of ethanol is 500 milliliters now. The contents of the reaction flask have turned black, and this is due to some side reactions. Sulfuric acid is a strong oxidizing acid, so it oxidizes something and it forms essentially carbon, so that's what we see here. All of the ethanol has been added, so I'm now going to keep the distillation running until the still head temperature rises and the rate of collection slows down. We're approaching the end of the distillation. The rate of collection is going down as well as the still head temperature is continuously dropping. And uh, once I crank up the heat on the hot plate a little bit, gas evolution starts to increase quite a bit. So it indicates that right now we have a great excess of sulfuric acid in the reaction flask. Thus, once we heat it up a little bit, the elimination reaction is favored and we produce ethylene gas. So this means we're pretty much done and we got all the ether we could get and I'm gonna keep this running for just a tad more and then shut it off. After the distillation we're left with this yield of very crude diethyl ether. In order to further purify it we have to wash it first. Washing serves to remove traces of acid as well as ethanol. So we're going to wash with a saturated baking soda solution twice and then once with a saturated salt solution. So here goes the first washing. Off-camera I washed the ether with saturated baking soda solution a second time and now we're going to wash it with a saturated table salt or sodium chloride solution one last time. After the final sodium chloride wash, I transferred the ether back into the 1 liter round bottom flask. On the left here, I weighed out 50 grams of calcium chloride 
which we are going to add to the ether now. This serves to remove traces of ethanol as well as water. The flask is sitting in an ice bath since the hydration of calcium chloride is exothermic and it might actually boil off our ether. So, here we go. Here we are the next day. The ether has been sitting over some calcium chloride during the night and now I'm going to add some fresh calcium chloride and fractionate our product. I've set up for fractional distillation of our ether product. The apparatus is basically exactly the same as before without the addition funnel. So this is just your basic boiling flask the grill column still had condenser setup. The only thing missing in this shot is the wash bottle containing a little bit of sulfuric acid which I'm going to add now. I turn on my hot plate and set it to a very low setting. We are now going to start fractionating off our ether. Later on I'm also going to add some ice in the bath around a collection flask. The water in the condenser is also ice cold. The ether has reached a gentle boil and we are now collecting our recently pure product. The still head temperature is reading a constant 37 degrees Celsius, indicating that we do have in fact some impurities in there. But for my purposes it's going to be alright. The collecting flask was getting quite full so I took it off and poured all the ether I had so far into this bottle. I'm going to use the ether in the Grignard reaction. Once as a solvent for the whole reaction and then after workup we also need some ether to extract our product. So I basically need some ether that's absolutely dry as a solvent for the reaction and some ether where it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to use the ether I have in this bottle and I'm going to uh, dry it and remove as much water as I can and I'm going to collect the rest of the ether and just put it in a bottle over some potassium hydroxide. You can look forward to seeing how to dry ether in an upcoming video. I stopped the distillation once the still had temperature started to rise so here's our final yield of diethyl ether. I'd say it's roughly 250 milliliters and I think it's reasonably pure the ether in the bottle on the left will be further dried to serve as a solvent in the Grignard reaction and the ether on the right is stored in a brown glass bottle over some potassium hydroxide. If you want to store ether for a longer time this is what you should do since the potassium hydroxide uh, reacts with any hydroperoxides that might form in the ether and transforms them into insoluble compounds so they won't pose a hazard during our, uh, your next distillation. Alright, keep looking forward to the next video where we will dry the ether and um, that's it for today. As always, I hope you liked it. Leave me a comment in the comment section down below. Give me a thumbs up if you want and I'll hopefully see you in the next one.